If you enjoy Pokemon and crafts and want to catch them all, here's the perfect project for you, the 3D Bead Pokeball. These 3D Bead Pokeballs are definitely a blast with a unique design that will stand out and last. With the use of basic colors, it's easy to see that it looks exactly like a real life Pokeball and it's 3D. Believe me when I say, it's no mistake that this design is fast fun and easy to make. So let's get ready for this tutorial to satisfy your creative needs. Feel free to give this video a like and enjoy this episode of Turbo Beats. Here's a list of everything you need to make the 3DB Pokeball. Making a Pokeball is simple, but before we start this project, I'm just letting you know that I'm using this clear bead and stretch string that I picked up from my local Walmart for about $3. It's perfect and it works great. With that being said, let's create something great. Start out by taking one and a half feet of string and we're going to add 12 beads to that string, starting with one white bead and 11 black beads. This is what it should look like so far. Once you have those beads on the string, we're going to move those beads toward one end of the string. Next, we're going to tie both ends of string together with a square knot to lock all of those beads into place. You will see that when tying the string, this will bring all of those beads together in a semicircle. Just be sure when tying the string that your knot is tied nice and secure to ensure that everything stays locked into place and stays together. Now that the knot is tied, you should be able to push those beads in the shape of a hexagon. That's a shape with six points. You will see that it's just as simple as it looks here. We're just pushing in every other bead toward the center. Just be sure that that white bead is pushed in and everything else should be easy to follow. This is what it should look like so far. As I've said before, it should be in the shape of a hexagon. We should have one short end of string and one long end of string to use. What we'll do next is we'll take that long end of string and run it back to the closest black bead here. Watch close as I guide the string through this bead. When you get that string through that bead, be sure to pull it all the way through and this will set us up for the next steps. Now we can build around the shape by adding beads to the long end of the string and running it through each point. Let's go ahead and take the long end of the string and we're going to add 3 beads to that string starting with 1 black bead and 2 white beads. This is what it should look like. Now we're going to take that long end of string and run it to that next point of the hexagon by skipping one bead. Watch close as I guide the string through this bead, pulling that string all the way through until those three beads stack right into place, looking just like this. As you can see, the string is coming out of this point here. We're ready to add beads to the string, running it to the next point. Let's go ahead and add three red beads to the string. Now that we have those beads on the string, we're gonna run that string to the next point of that hexagon. Again, watch close as I guide the string through this bead, pulling the string all the way through until those three beads that were added to the string stack right into place, looking just like this. Pull that string to keep those beads in a tight formation. From here, we can add more beads to the string. Go ahead and add three white beads to that string. Now that we have those beads on the string, we're gonna run that string to the next point of that hexagon. Again, continue watching as I guide the string through the speed, pulling the string all the way through into those three beads that were added, stack into place to make another point, just like this. As we've done before, we're ready to add more beads to that string. Go ahead and add three red beads to that string. Once you have those beads on the string, we're going to run that string to the next point of that hexagon. Watch close as I guide the string through this bead point. Again, once you have that string through that bead, You'll pull that string all the way through until those three beads that were added to the string stack right into place. Be sure to pull that string just enough, keeping those beads in a tight formation, ensuring that everything turns out correctly. With the fourth point finished, it's on to creating the fifth point. Go ahead and take that long end of string, and we're going to add three beads to the string. Two white beads, and one black bead. This is what it should look like. Now that we have those beads on the string, again, we'll run that string to the next bead point here of the hexagon. Watch close as I guide the string to that bead, pulling the string all the way through until those three beads that were added stack right into place, creating a point. 
With the fifth point finished, we're on to creating the sixth and final point of this pattern. Again, we'll take the string, add beads, and run it to the final point here. So let's go ahead and add three beads to that string. That's two black beads and one red bead in the middle, looking just like this. Now that we have those beads on the string, we're going to run that string through the final point here of the hexagon. Watch close as I guide the string to that bead, pulling that string all the way through until those three beads stack right into place, creating a point, just like this. As you will see, we've created a six-pointed star in this unique looking pattern of colors. This is exactly what everything should look like so far. From this point, I would recommend running that long end of string around the pattern through all of the beads that create the outline of the star. This will strengthen and reinforce those beads, keeping everything feeling a bit more firm, running that stream all the way around until you reach this point here. Once you've reinforced those points by running the string all the way around the star, the two ends of string should be relatively in the same location. From here, you can tie both ends of string together with a square knot to lock all of those beads into place. As I've mentioned before, when tying the string together, be sure that your knot is tied nice and secure to ensure that everything stays together. With the knot tied, you can now carefully cut off the tied loose ends of string. Alright, so from here we have a 6 point star that we're ready to turn into a ball. Again, this is exactly what it should look like. So once you're ready, what you'll do is you'll take no more than 6 inches of string. I'll be using fishing line for this part. So what you'll do is you'll run the string through the 3 red points of the star. So watch close as I guide the string through the 3 red points of the star. With this visual, it should be clear and easy to see the path that I'm using to guide the string through these three bead points. Remember, we're using six inches of fishing line, running that string through the three red bead points of the star. Once you've ran the string through those three bead points, you can now tie both ends of string together. When tying the string, you'll notice that those three red points will come together, creating a single point. Again, we're tying the string together with a square knot to keep everything locked into place. Be sure that your knot is tied nice and secure to ensure that everything stays together. As you can see, the knot is tied and all of the beads are locked into place. From here, we'll carefully cut off those tied loose ends of string. Now that we have this half of the ball together looking just like this, We'll flip it over on the other side, which should have this triangular shape. As we've done before, we'll take 6 inches of string, bringing all of those points together. Continue watching as I guide the string to these 3 bead points. Again, that's the 3 white beads that make up the corner of this triangle. As I've mentioned before, this visual reference should make it clear and easy to see which beads I'm guiding the string through. So it's just like we've done before, once you've ran that string through all three of those bead points, you can now tie both ends of string together. When both ends of string are pulled tightly, all three points will come together creating a single point. When tying the string together, let's be sure that those beads are in a tight formation, ensuring the ball maintains its correct shape, minimizing any gaps in between the beads. Also be sure that your knot is tied nice and secure, ensuring that everything stays locked into place and stays together. Now that our knot is tied and everything is locked into place, all that is left is to carefully cut off the tied loose ends of string and your 3D Pokeball is now complete. And there you have it, another perfect 3D bead design that was fine, fast fun and easy to make. Hopefully this tutorial was helpful and you can create one just as great. If there's anything you'd like to add, requests or suggestions, feel free to leave a comment below. And if you are new, or you haven't already, don't forget that you can always subscribe if you want to be notified of more bead tutorials just like this one, hoping you'll tune in for the next one to satisfy your creative needs. Until next time, have a ball, catch them all. Thanks for watching Turbo Beads.